The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. On today's program, Ancient Water Area, Attack of Black Dragon, Folk Heroes, Fresh Air, Water Smooth Surface, Tian Shan Spruces Stretching to the Sky. We can keep describing the beauty of nature that can be seen from the shore of the Lake Isik, which is in the gorge of the Trans Ili Alatau Mountains. When did this amazing water area appear here? What wild cats lived in the forests surrounding the lake? And who was the first European to visit and describe the Lake Isik? Scientists are unanimous in statement that the Lake Isik was formed in the result of a massive mountain collapse, which made the dam with about 300 meters in height. And this happened in the 6th millennium BC. According to some scientists, the age of this lake is 8 to 10,000 years. Well, it appeared about 8,000 years ago after the last period of the so-called Valdai glaciation, the last glacial period in the mountains. This is how a picturesque mountain lake appeared at an altitude of more than one and a half kilometers above the sea level. Its length was about two kilometers, width 500 meters, and depth was about 50 to 80 meters. Its water was always cool. In rare cases, the temperature rose to 15 degrees above zero. It had many Kazakh names, Jasil Kol, Green Lake, and other names. It also had poetic names that passed from generation to generation. But the most widespread name has been the name Isik. The village and area near this lake are also called Isik. There are such settlements as Talgar, Al Mali, and Isik on the foothills of the Trans Ili Alatau Mountains. The name Isik has been the main one for the last several centuries. There is another version of the appearance of the place name Isik. Some scientists suggest that this name was given by a well-known geographer and public figure who visited Isik Kul Lake in Kyrgyzstan before traveling to our mountain lake. Well, Pyotr Pyotrovich Semyonov Tien Shansky was the first European who visited these places in 1856 to 1857. Together with several Cossacks, he passed the upper reaches of this Isik River and they saw tigers there. It must have been the last two Caspian tigers which inhabited these mountains. Now this tiger is an extinct tiger population. Unfortunately, the Cossack, who was walking the lower path without a dog, noticed the tiger in the bushes really late, and he did not have time to shoot this tiger. The tiger rushed to the Cossack so rapidly that it knocked out the rifle from his hands. The experienced Cossack stood before the tiger without losing heart, and the tiger also stopped and laid down in front of the hunter, like a cat lies in front of a mouse when she stops moving. Nowadays, the story of the frontal collision of the wild cat and man seems amazing and incredible. Once upon a time, the tigers, the kings of the jungle, really dominated the highlands of Kazakhstan. Today, this story is considered as fantastic. 
In the area 100 to 200 kilometers far from Almaty, the tiger population was high at the end of the 19th century. The last tiger was killed before the war. The world around the lake changed. Wild cats became extinct. Asphalt roads replaced trails. Boats and motorboats started to sail on the water. The cool and calm climate of this place attracted many tourists, and Lake Isik became a favorite tourist destination in the first half of the 20th century. It seemed that here time had stood still, and nothing could disturb the majestic silence. However, the idyll, which had been created by nature for thousands of years, was destroyed by nature itself within a few hours. What tragedy happened in this paradise? What do witnesses remember about that day? And which well-known person almost died in the Isik disaster? Sunday, July 7th, 1963. It was a very hot summer day. During that summer, a lot of people came to take a rest on the shores of the Lake Isik. And on the 7th of July, high-ranking guests were going to visit this lake. Thus, a delegation headed by Chairman of the Council of Ministers of the USSR, Alexei Kosygin, arrived that morning. A bit later, another honorable person, the world's first woman astronaut, Valentina Tereshkova, was supposed to visit the local resort. People got used to serve such high-ranked persons and created all conditions for this. The Coast Guard was usually on duty to ensure safety on the shore, but that day their attempts to help were unsuccessful. I was nine years old. It was Sunday. I went to the bazaar with my sister. Our mother picked onions and gave it to us to sell. While we sold all onions and my sister said, let's go to the lake. I answered, our parents will scold us. She said, they will not know. His sister talked little Bikir to go to the lake. Young, intelligent children got to the lake by themselves, taking a shuttle bus. At 10 a.m., they were looking at the mountain scenery and admiring its beauty. However, the boy did not share the enthusiasm of his sister, who was dreaming to sail on a sightseeing boat. He wanted to go home. I started crying, and my sister bought me an ice cream so I would not cry. Okay, I agreed, but my inner voice said, do not get on this boat. And at this moment, I just lost the desire to sail on this boat. I ran to the bus station. I came to the driver, and as usual, children say, I said, could you please take me to the Isik village? My dad will pay you then. He answered, all right, boy, get on the bus. I got on and my sister came at this moment. Here are the tickets. Let's get on the boat. I did not want to, and of course, she scolded me and was insisting to go. I said that I would not go, and that's it. She had to get on the bus. The bus moved, and we arrived home. At that time, the young travelers had no idea that a lucky break saved them from face-to-face -face meeting with the Black Dragon. At midday, a cloud covered the sky over the lake Isik. The thunder rumbled in the mountains, and after a while, an irresistible stream poured out of the gorge. It was a mud flow. And it furiously demolished everything in its path, trees, buildings, and defenseless people. The catastrophic mud flow descended from the glacier called Jarsai. It is on the left tributary in the upper reaches of Isik. It was a small lake with a volume of only 200,000 cubic meters of water. The result of the Jarsai glacier melting, this small lake overflowed. And, значит, 
There was a mud flow. Stones, soil, clay, sand, everything rushed down and ruined the shores. This mass collapsed into the lake at a very high speed. The speed was very high, about five to six meters per second. Later, it was estimated that there were 12 shafts of mud flow. And the volume of this mud flow was enormous. There were around 6 million cubic meters of mudstone mass. All this mass fell into the Isik Lake. The huge waves of mud flow of the Jarsai River destroyed everything on its way with uncontrollable power. There were trees, stones and sand in this flow. Black Dragon collapsed into the Isik Lake in a wave with about 12 meters height and at a speed of more than 20 kilometers per hour. The speed of the flow was so high that the lake burst its shore. The flow took the boats, which were sailing on the lake, to the rocks. There were two boat stations, where not only boats were, but also motorboats. These motorboats were big ones with a capacity for 100 to 200 people. They were sailing on the lake. The area of the lake was about one square kilometer. A large number of casualties occurred as a result of this mud flow. According to the official data, this number was about 50 to 100 people. But later I found information stating that the mud flow claimed the lives of 1,000 people. As per unofficial data, about 3,000 people died in the result of this disaster. But this figure was not mentioned in the media. The waves of mud flow continued to move towards the settlements. The only barrier for mud flow was a single but firm dam, which was formed 8,000 years ago in the result of natural changes. This wall stood against two strong blows, but it broke down after the third wave of mud flow full of stone and soil, and the dam burst. As you know, there are turns on the rivers, speed increased and mass became bigger and bigger. Even if the lake was deep and there was so much water, it is not able, let's say, to accommodate such a huge mass of stones and soil. This was the reason for the burst of the dam, which is about 300 meters high. It was the most intensive and disastrous mud flow which was in this river. Passing the last barrier, Black Dragon moved towards the city. Pioneer camps and holiday resorts, residential districts and sown fields were destroyed by it. Many families lost their relatives in that catastrophe. Despite the fact that already 54 years have passed, the witnesses remember the events of the fatal July day as if it were yesterday. <laughs> I put my one child on my back and ran. I was about three years old and I was pregnant at that time. We ran on Koktebe. I had nine children. My husband was a disabled person and two of my children were also disabled. They were at home. 
I worked at the village center and took small children to my work, but others were at home at that day, and all of them died. Not without reason, it is said that a mother's love is selfless and passionate. Bumpul Ganieva managed to save five of her children and the baby she was pregnant with. Unfortunately, her husband and three other children who stayed at home died in the result of this disaster. The pain has eased after the years a bit, but the mourning mother and wife still hears the sound of the rushing wave of water. Experts say that people should know the elementary rules of behavior in the mountains when there is a disaster. If there is mud flow, then you can hear rumble somewhere up and you should climb up as high as possible. Rumble sounds very loud, as if thousands of tanks or tractors started their engines. Of course, the theory always differs from practice. It is known that the chairman of the Council of Ministers of the USSR, Alexei Kosygin, who was on the lake shore that morning, stood still and stared in the mud flow which was coming from the mountains. He managed to escape thanks to the fearless staff of the delegation which was accompanying him. The legendary woman astronaut Valentina Tereshkova, who celebrated her 80th birthday this year, was born under a lucky star. I remember Valentina Tereshkova was in Almaty at that time. She was planning to visit the Isik Lake that Sunday, but due to some reasons, her trip was postponed. Black Dragon, which raged during several hours, stopped on a distance of 50 kilometers after breaking the dam. By Monday morning, the most beautiful mountain lake was turned into a huge, dirty puddle. The most terrible, inevitable part started, the time of counting the number of casualties and victims. Who helped the locals of Isik village to cope with the consequences of the mud flow? What have people learned from this catastrophe? And are people safe from such disasters today? Mud flow of Isik is one of the largest and most destructive on the territory of the Soviet Union. Experts say that people were not ready for such a catastrophe. It was difficult to predict the Black Dragon, and the worst thing is that it was impossible to warn people about it. It was year 1963. There was no internet, cell phones to send messages. Today, these things are affordable and widely used. One was not able to warn even if he knew that there was a mud flow. If there was a chance to warn in time, it would be possible to save many people to evacuate children from camps and to take them to higher places. It would be possible to inform people who lived along the river and send them to a safe place. For Mikhail Kudrin, that July day of 1963 started as other days of his life went to the field for the production of silk cocoons. The news delivered by the boys came out of the blue. At first, no one believed that the dam was destroyed. When we climbed on the high hill, we saw mud flow. There was mud, stones, trees, everything was in water, and this mass was coming down. We were safe because we were on the high hill. The bus station was destroyed and its wreckage was on water. Mikhail is sure that if the dam was broken immediately, not from the third attempt, then probably the Isik city would have been destroyed and would not exist on the map of modern Kazakhstan. To save the settlement from flooding, people used resources of one of the main local attractions building. And it was the lowest cost. There was the winery at the village, and this winery had the cellars with 10 meters depth. 
These cellars were with concrete walls and floors. So these cellars stopped the water and Isik was not fully destroyed. My father was working as a watchman there. He said that a lot of bottles with wine were in water. In short, mud flow brought much trouble here. It is well known that people unite when there is a common trouble. So the nearest military unit was raised to arrange rescue operations. There were a lot of volunteers also who were ready to help. They managed to rescue about 2,000 victims within a few days. Most of them, especially those who went out to pick mushrooms that day, were found high in the mountains. They were hungry and exhausted because they climbed high to be rescued from the mud flow and could not go down. There were many children among the victims. There was a camp for children, and people saved them by taking on helicopters. A pilot, master of the Kazakh civil aviation, Igor Zelman, also took part in the evacuation after the disaster of the summer of 1963. Victims whom he evacuated were unaware that he was the master of his work, but he was a highly professional pilot. During his life, he modestly helped climbers conquer high peaks, rescued them in bad weather, and accurately delivered the cargo necessary for the ascent. The pilot of the helicopter who evacuated people will be awarded the Red Star Medal. He could not find out the exact number of rescued people. In one article, it is reported that the soldiers rescued about 2,000 people. The exact number of casualties of the Isik mud flow is still unknown. Some people went missing. About 2,000 houses were destroyed. Most of them were wooden one-floor buildings. Powerful waves of mud flow destroyed them within a couple of hours. Some lost their parents, others lost their wives or husbands, the third ones lost their children, some became disabled. The degree of damage with such natural disasters cause is very high. Of course, it is not easy. Everybody has learned lessons from this event, both people and the government. The question about protecting the cities from the threats of natural disasters was raised. The department, Kazglav Selzashita, was organized under the Council of Ministers of the Kazakh SSR. This organization continues its work today, it builds mud protection facilities, follows the operation of these constructions, and informs citizens in case of emergency situations. They constantly monitor the condition of the lakes which are on moraines. They have representatives who are there during the summer seasons. They conduct systematics over flights on helicopters to monitor the condition of these lakes. In the mid-80s of the last century, restoration works aimed to rebuild the dam started. Excavators worked on the Isik Lake and cleaned the bottom of the lake. And this mass was used for a new dam. The spillway devices allowing draining excess fluid were built here. The lake gradually began to be filled with water. After that mud flow, the lake could be restored completely. For security purpose, it was decided not to fill it up to previous volumes. Today, the water level is a bit more than half of the former volume. If you look at the photo of the lake of 1963, you can see how it looked like. If suddenly, such a situation happens again, and the current volume of water can withstand a large flow. The lake is not completely filled as a security measure. This brings to mind some lines from the poem by scholar Nikolai Gumilov. Sorrow of thousands was there, the heart beat like a hunted animal, and wanted to travel to unknown distances. But now I love the reflection of mountains at the surface of crystal clear lakes. The sharp peaks of Trans-Ili-Alatau Mountains reflected at the quiet surface of the Isik Lake 
are beautiful. But we paid a heavy price for this beauty. And the memory of that tragedy still lives in the heart of our people with the hope that this will never happen again.